everybody this is Praxis and today I'm working on getting a home ready for these guys right here. These are our first dozen eggs that are going to be for uh, you know our chicken coop that we are going to be setting up outside. They've been in the incubator for 18 days. We had them in the hot room back where we have like uh, the inverters and the hot water tank and everything. We just brought them out. Uh, we've taken out all the stuff for rotating the eggs because in the next couple days are going to be hatching. We're going to talk more about those guys uh, in particular what the process was for that in a separate video but uh, I wanted to kind of show where I'm going to be putting the, uh, the chicken coop because uh, uh, I think it's kind of a cool place. Uh, where we're going to be uh, sticking it is right in this wall here. Now this hole in the wall with a tarp over it, I uh, set that aside and left that open uh, in order to have a very large opening if I wanted to bring large things in and out of the greenhouse that couldn't fit through the door. It's th a full three feet wide uh, and that was just kind of like a what if kind of thing. And what if came up and I think I'm going to use that, door, that opening actually for the chicken coop. So the chicken coop will be on the outside of this structure, but we're going to have some doors there so we can access it in the winter so we can get eggs. I know chickens don't lay the most amount of eggs in the winter, but you know, they, they do you know, lay eggs occasionally. This will mean we don't have to go out into the snow to check on them. Uh, and also the warmth of the greenhouse. The greenhouse, even at night in the winter, very rarely goes below 32 degrees. So having that warmth on this, uh, their doors is going to help to keep the chicken coop warm so I don't have to do any kind of backup heating. Let's go out, uh, outside over here and I'll kind of show you what that's going to look like. All right. This is where I've been prepping some of the boards. There's nothing particularly interesting about that. Just a bunch of two by threes which are five dollars a piece now. <laughs> but uh, I'm just uh, chopping those guys up. And this is uh, this is where it's going to be keying in. I just, again, just got a tarp on here with some uh, battens to kind of hold it down but uh, it's going to key right into this it's three feet wide and it's going to overextend by a foot on either side so it'll be five feet wide it's going to be three feet deep uh, coming out over here and instead of putting supports out uh, in this area which was my original plan uh, you know to sink in some concrete and have some supports to hold this end of it I think I'm just going to have a cantilever off of the wall there which means it just kind of overhangs. There's not going to be a ton of weight in there. I mean, it's chickens, you know, you're going to have like their water and their food in there. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, we're, we're able to grab onto the really uh, strong posts uh, that are on the other side of this wall. And I think, uh, you know, with cross bracing, I think that's going to be fine. And uh, the reason I wanted to do that was because, uh, you know, aside from the pain in the butt of having to put some footings in here, if I happen to not sink them far enough or if there was some frost heaving or something going on, you know, if, if you've got a post here and you're, you've got your thing attached to the wall over here, if the post goes up, it's going to, like, be putting stress on the wall. So if there was any problem with my footings and I didn't sink them, like, a full five or six feet, around here you want, like, you know, a good four or five foot... Uh, deep footing. That's a pretty deep footing. Uh, so I was thinking, why not just not do it at all and have the thing hang off the wall? And I, I think it's going to be fine. I know the way the structure is there. It's a pretty, uh, pretty strong, pretty rigid, and um, I think it's going to work out okay. But keep watching the series, and I'll let you know if it doesn't. Uh, so like I said, three feet deep, five feet wide, uh, and then uh, coming off the back wall, there'll be a door so they can get in and out, and they're going to come into a chicken run, which is going to be Kind of over here. I don't know the exact size and shape of their run area. I want to make it big enough so they got plenty of room. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to make it so big that it starts pinching into this area because we're always coming uh, up those steps around, heading back over that way to get to the root cellar. And eventually, I, what I want to do over here where the toy boxes are over here, I want to uh, set up kind of an outdoor cooking uh, setup there. So this would be kind of a place where you'd come and hang out. There'd be, you know, outdoor cooking, you know, as people do that. Um, so I, again, I don't want it to really bite into that area too, too much. Uh, I am going to have a storage opportunity uh, on the top of it. There's going to be a, a blue metal roof, just like we have on top of the house, coming uh, you know, just off from here. And the chickens don't need all that head space. So what I figured I'd do is I'm going to put kind of a ceiling here, and then there's going to be some you know, doors on the side, and I'll be able to put you know, outdoor garden tools, maybe cooking utensils, things of that nature that might be uh, related to this. But, uh, you know, whenever you can find storage opportunities, I kind of like to take advantage of those and, uh, you know, make use of them. So that's the plan. I'm just starting to chop up wood now. I got some time, three days before they even hatch, I'm going to be inside for, I don't know how long, but I'm sure it'll be plenty of time for me to finish this thing up. But the clock is ticking. That's it. Thanks for watching.